parents and family members. It's me, Mrs. Davis from Happy Place to Grow. How are you doing? I hope you are having a fun and adventurous summer. I know I'm enjoying my time off here at home. However, I wanted to check in with you and see how the summer learning was going on at your house. Yeah, I said learning. I know your child is far away from school. They don't even want to think about it. However, we know that they need to keep their skills sharp even in the summer. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you some fun and creative learning activities. We may even sneak in some learning and they may not even know it. Today's topic for fun and creative summer learning is reading. Now, reading is probably going to be the easiest area to work with because there are so many different things you can do with reading. All right, here's my first creative and fun way to do some reading this summer. And this totally will not feel like reading. You know how you go out and you're taking a drive or maybe you and your child are taking a walk through the neighborhood, you're going to the grocery store, you have to do a little errand. This is a great opportunity for your child to do some reading. As they look around, make them aware of things that are going on around them, out the window, you know, there's road signs to read, there are restaurant signs, there are all kinds of businesses that have messages on them, and you guys can work together as a team spying some different kinds of signs that you notice. I know in my neighborhood that most of the street signs are named after president. So any kind of print that they can see as you are taking time out of the house is going to be a fun way for them to read and, you know, maybe pick up some new words or you could jumpstart on a conversation. I know with my students this year, I told them about all of my street names or most all of them being named after presidents and they found that really fascinating. You know, have you ever wondered why the streets in your neighborhood have those names? That might be something you can find out or just kind of guess and speculate on. So as you're driving and taking those normal daily routine trips, take a few minutes to spy things around that have print and writing on them. So that's always fun. And I know when my family and I, when my children were young, we took trips, vacation trips, and we always like to do the ABC game where we were riding down the road and we started with the letter A and the first one in the family to spy a sign that had um, started with the letter A we read that word and then we went to the letter B. We were spying for a word that started with the letter B. And this was a fun way to read words. The kids were very engaged because they wanted to be the first to spy a word with that letter. Um, and it also made the trip go faster. So that is the first easiest way. Just every day as you're going out doing different activities, you might want to be spying for environmental print. Now, also at your house, you're going to want to make sure that your child has books to read. So this can be done. Of course, many of you probably already have collections of books, but you know, if you don't have that many, you can always hit your public library. I know probably um, now lots of libraries are opening back up at least for a limited time or a limited number of people. So you might want to check your local library and see. You can even go online and check out books from your local library too. You can go, of course, to different stores and buy books if you want to do that. I love to hit Kohl's. You can see my little book characters back here. You know, they always have 
the fun stuffed animals, and then really inexpensive books that go with these characters. So that's a great way to build collections. Hey, speaking of collections, a lot of children love certain characters or certain books, and they're more interested in reading. So you might want to find out what books your child is really interested in. I know my grandson loves a couple different um, series. He loves the Pete the Cat books. So um, every time I'm out, maybe at Walmart or a different store, or even sometimes I do book orders on Scholastic and I'll pick him up a Pete the Cat book. A very funny character and he's definitely gotten into the Fly Guy books. So if your child has a favorite character or a favorite book and they're interested in that, you might want to um, pick up some books because that will make the reading more interesting and they may want to do it even though it is the summer. And that's why I say go to your public library. You might be able to pick up a lot of titles without having to even pay anything for them and have lots of choices. Um, now, if you're limited and you can't get to the library or maybe your library is um, not open, um, right now and not inviting people to come in yet, um, you might want to check out some online resources. Now, of course, YouTube is great. I know um, there are lots of great storytellers that will tell stories and they're definitely telling these fun stories. So you can check that out. There's a, um, also a great resource called Epic Books. I don't know if you've heard about this. Now, for teachers and educators, it's a free resource. So we use it in our classrooms all the time. However, you can join as parents, and I think it's a very nominal, just so minimal um, uh, fee every month, you know, for the app and for the resources. It's it's compared to what you get. The price is just pennies on the day, I'm sure, but there's lots of different books and there's videos, there's how-to videos, songs, science videos. I mean, just tens of thousands of, of uh, resources available through this one app. So it's definitely uh, worth your um, checking out for sure, especially if your child likes to do things um, on computer. You can do it on a laptop, you can do it on a desktop. This is a tablet. I think there's also the app can go down, be downloaded on your phone. So it's definitely a go-to resource if you're shy on being able to get lots of books. This is going to be your best friend in providing lots of resources. Now, don't forget that when you're wanting your child to read, Again, it's summer, so you're going to want to sneak in fun ways to do that. So you might want to find a really cool place to read. Uh, maybe a tent. If you've got a tent, that might be really cool to sneak in the tent. Um, go to the park. That might be a little distracting, but maybe in the later evening, you can say, let's go read a little bit, and then we'll go play on the playground equipment. That might be an incentive, a way to incentivize your child. Um, the porch. I mean, I don't know. It just could be so many different creative places. Instead of just sitting in a chair in the living room, think about fun places to sneak off and read. And hey, parents, family members, you need to be reading also. You know, I love to read. I've got Audible. I've got my Kindle books. I've got hard copies of books. So reading with your child is going to help them see that reading is just part of life. Adults do it. Adults like to do it. Hopefully you do. Um, but it shows them the value of it if you're joining in. So if you have a chance to read with your child at the same time, that would be wonderful. All right. So we've talked about reading the environment having some books and resources at your house. And don't forget, this is the most powerful way that you can spend time reading with your child this summer, and that's the read aloud. So you're gonna wanna um, get some really good books um, to read 
to your child. Um, maybe they're really interested in like chapter books, but they're not ready to read chapter books. That might be a great time for you to read a chapter to them a night. They need to hear you reading um, and the books that you read to them um, may be more difficult. And so there's going to be harder words. They're going to pick up some new vocabulary. You can talk about the characters and the setting and what's happening and have some really good conversations about stories. You might want to read them fairy tales or you might want to read them science fiction or nonfiction. So don't forget how powerful the read aloud time is. Uh, maybe once a week at night or twice a week, just, you know, um, cozy up together and you read to them. Because, you know, reading and keeping those reading skills sharp is so, so important. All right. I hope that you found some good and helpful tips to keep reading going this summer. And I do believe that these activities will be fun for your child. There'll be um, ways for your child to keep that learning going, keep their reading skills sharp in a way that's fun. Because as we all know, in the summer, the last thing we want to think about is school. So we have to kind of sneak in that learning. All right. Until our next fun and creative summer learning video, as always, have a good one and keep on reading.